everybody, welcome back to the Model Haven. Uh, this is John, and uh, today I'm doing an intro on my next build. Uh, this is a uh, vintage Revell Goodyear blimp uh, kit. Um, I actually uh, got one of these for my birthday uh, sometime in the mid to late 70s, and um, I thought it'd be cool to uh, pick up one. This one's actually still sealed in its original cellophane, uh, so hopefully it's uh, held up pretty well over the years. Um, but the really cool thing about this is that it actually has a lighted and moving uh, display where you can uh, make your own signs um, and it's kind of similar to the uh, the skytacular signs that the real blimps used to have um, but yeah let's let's head to the bench and open this up and take a look all right so uh, before we open this thing up um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about uh, the Goodyear blimp itself. So I, I did a little bit of research on the GZ20 model, which is what this would have been based on. Uh, this kit came out in uh, uh, 1975, and uh, I got it sometime around then, uh, mid to late 70s, maybe 76, 77, uh, as a birthday present. Um, but in the process of uh, looking into that, I discovered that there actually was uh, a Goodyear blimp, the uh, Goodyear America, that was based out of Spring, Texas, um, at an airfield uh, just uh, about seven miles from where I live, uh, that um, was open from 1969 uh, until around uh, 1992. Uh, so that was, it closed many years before we uh, relocated here. Um, but I thought it was kind of interesting um, that there was one based so close to here in the first place, so I thought I'd uh, tell you guys a little bit about it. Um, here we can see uh, a picture of the of the actual blimp that was based uh, here uh, north of Houston, um, and this is the earliest picture I could find of it. This one's probably from around '69 to sometime in the early '70s, uh, and you can see that it's actually there's this uh, cool uh, diesel uh, bus that they're using to to move it around on the airfield, and I thought. That might be a cool addition to the model at some point if I could find one that was approximately the right scale and that I could, uh, you know, paint to look like this one. Uh, but uh, I found a few uh, pictures uh, online of this, and I'll, I'll include a, a uh, link below uh, to the actual site where I found all this information if you want to check it out. Uh, but here's another picture. This one's from 1979 uh, of it mooring at the airfield. And uh, even in 79, this area was, was fairly rural. It was, it was pretty far out there. There were starting to be suburbs built. Uh, our house was built in 74, so um, our house was already around when this picture was taken. Um, but there's a few other pictures here. Uh, here's another one. Uh, this one was taken, uh, it, it's undated. I think this one's from sometime in the mid 80s. Uh, but you can see there's this uh, strip mall here back on Holsworth Road, and, and that actually. Uh, still exists. Uh, here's another one. This one I know was taken uh, in the early 90s, uh, right before the um, airfield closed. And you can see this, uh, um, I don't know if you can actually see it in the video, but there's this Lowe's Theater back here, and that's actually still there. Uh, it's an AMC theater now, but the building looks identical to that. Um, and here's another picture. You can see that Lowe's Theater here on the left, and this is the hangar that used to exist and unfortunately this was torn down a couple of years after the uh, airfield uh, was closed um, but again I thought this was uh, kinda cool too, it'd be cool to, to actually create you know a, a scratch built hangar for this at some point although I had talked to my dad and he actually has been in not this particular hangar but another one of the Goodyear hangars and he says that they're they're pretty complex it would actually be a really pretty difficult model to build uh, but it's still kinda cool to think about and to see this picture um, so uh, here's some aerial views of that same um, airfield here. Over here you can see I-45. Uh, this is Holdsworth Road and then you can see the two landing spots and here's the hangar over in the left. This picture was taken in 73 when it was still pretty rural around here. Uh, here's another one taken in 87 and you can see all those strip malls that start, started to uh, show up but otherwise still pretty, pretty similar. There was this area you could pull off onto on the side of the highway if you wanted to watch the blimp uh, take off or land. Um, here's another picture from 95. Uh, this is a couple of years after the uh, field was closed and you can see that they've actually built a Home Depot down here which uh, still exists. 
Um, here's another picture taken from 2002, um, and you can see that there's a lot more development. This is actually a Lowe's that's also still there, and this is the Lowe's parking lot. Um, but you can see that the area where that hangar used to be is uh, um, being used as a parking lot in this picture. Uh, that still exists, although it's currently closed. Um, and actually, um, there's been some more developments. There's actually a Firestone and a large parking lot in this area right here. Um, but uh, when I found out that it was so close and that uh, aside from all the airfield that the, the, the lot where the hangar was still exists, I actually uh, went over there, uh, took a quick drive, and took a little bit of video, um, which I'll show you guys right now. Alright, so uh, let's uh, open this up and take a look. So, uh, as I mentioned, it's still in the original cellophane, although there are, um, I don't know if you can see that, but some of these corners have worn away a little bit. Uh, so there's definitely been some exposure to air in this thing. Um, I, I don't think it's going to hurt anything that wouldn't already have just been damaged by age. Um, but uh, let's, let's open it up and uh, find out. Okay, cool. Uh, so, uh, we've got a uh, parts tree here. This is actually has some of the working gears uh, that this make this thing work. Uh, we'll go over that a little bit when uh, we put it together. Uh, so, we've got our instructions here. Um, and it looks like we've got some uh, little bulbs here, incandescent bulbs. Don't know if those are still good. Uh, we've got some markers here that are used to make the signs. Uh, these markers are over 40 years old, so uh, I can almost guarantee that they're dried up. Um, but we can, we can get some markers or highlighters that can uh, basically do the same thing for us uh, when we start putting the signs together. Um, so I'm just going to leave this in its bag for now, but we'll open it up in the next video and uh, I can show it to you. Uh, so here's the, uh, the body, and it looks like everything's in pretty good shape as expected um, and here are the other uh, sprues so we've got the uh, here's the nose cone uh, this is these are the for the stand so I think that um, the way that this thing works is uh, here we can see it on this tree but there, there's a part in here that's used to hold in uh, two uh, D cell batteries and that's what powers this thing um, and there should be uh, actually a motor as well. Uh, yeah, here it is. A um, little electric motor. It's uh, still in the bag. So we'll, we'll open that up, see if it still works. Um, hopefully it still does. Uh, if not, I can easily get a uh, newer and probably more efficient motor than that. Um, but yeah, one, one, of, one of the drawbacks with this uh, kit, once you have it all built and working, is you can have the revolving display inside but the batteries are inside so every time the batteries die um, you'd have to remove the nose cone and the tail cone and open it up to change the batteries um, which you know you didn't want to do very much and I remember I'd, I I really didn't do it I played around with this a little bit after I had originally built it um, but I, I didn't open and close it too much and especially on this one because we're, we're going to go ahead and paint this uh, when I was a kid I, di I didn't paint it I just left it in the gray uh, put the uh, decals on, um, but we're not going to want to be opening and closing this thing. So what we're, we're going to do is we're going to run a remote power source down to the stand, and then we're going to make a, a custom stand, maybe with sort of like a gravel top, uh, like it's on the airfield, and then we'll have the power source uh, in the stand rather than in the blimp itself. I think that'll be a little bit easier. I also want to add a switch to the stand so we can uh, turn it on and off um, that way. Uh, without having to, I, I can't remember, I think you, if you twisted one of the cones, that's what turned it on and off. Um, I may be misremembering that, uh, but I, I think that's how it worked. Uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll dive in and uh, we'll figure out how that works. Um, but yeah, that, that's it for now. Uh, you know, this video is already getting pretty long, so um, we'll, we'll take a closer look at all this stuff uh, in the next one. Um, so 
Uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.